Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mike Flanagan back with you along with Matt Turek. Almost 300 viewers. We want to thank you all for being with us through this morning's uh, wonderful uh, coverage of the Cashers round. But now we are set. We've been preparing for this all day long. Lanes 5 and 6, 7 and 8. Somebody's going to make $15,500 here at the 2013 Proprietors Cup. If you're watching on our Inside Bowling page and not on the live stream up in your browser, if it says InsideBowling.com and you're on the video's IBTV Live page, you can go down below. You can take out and take a look at under the tabs of the cup payout. First place, $15,500. Second place, $9,000. 6,080, 4960, 3,200, 2560, 7th place, 2020, 8th place, 1860, ninth place, $1,580, and 10th place, $1,384. That's, that's going to be the whoever gets eliminated uh, first will be 1384 and 1580. So what's going to happen is we're going to watch these guys bowl two games. They're going to bowl a game on each one of these pairs, and two will be eliminated, and we will continue to do so as we get closer down to our booth. So a lot of great names in here, and we're really looking forward to these finals. If you want to see the top ten finalists, we also have a tab down there. Sebi Silvestri, Justin Veach, A.J. Rice, Chris Klasinski, Anthony Pepe, Adam Barta, Eric Copping, Rick Miller, Jason Sterner, and Jimmy Cook. And if you're just joining us now and you were here earlier, Zeke Bate was in the cut, but there was a, a scoring error from earlier today. Uh, that cost him 60 pins. It was just a, a tournament office miscue. So Zeke Bate is not in the top 10. So bowlers are practicing right now. We'll be back with you here in just a few with more coverage here from Dayton, Ohio at Beaverview Bowl. It's the Proprietors Cup, round of 10. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Proprietors Cup. It's the 2013 version. We're down to the elimination matches. Mike Flanagan, Matt Turek. Everything this weekend is brought to you by Turbo Driven to Bowl, our great sponsor bringing us here. And let's take them out to the lanes because action is getting underway. We've got two pairs down there, lanes five and six, and lanes seven and eight. Just a look at our man, Sebi Silvestri, bowled 879 earlier today on lanes seven and eight. We saw him start with a strike. Adam Barda also in this top. Ten bowlers, five on each pair. Five bowlers on each pair. We're going to cut down to eight. Strong, Matt. Right. <laughs> so we have five on each pair, and uh, on this pair here, it looks like we have Rick Miller and Justin Veach. Rick Miller has been coined as one of the best amateur left-handers in the country. Rob Gotchel, his good buddy from Lincoln, Nebraska, likes to talk about how great Rick Miller is. And Justin Veach has had a hot hand here this week, striking a lot. We just saw Eric, Eric Copping get a strike and Lots of movement here, lanes five and six, lanes seven and eight, about 10 lanes away from our booth. We're happy to have you here with us. A lot of people watching, we've just cracked the 300 mark here today. We'll try to keep an eye on our chat as much as we can. Looks like there's pr some predictions in the chat. It's a two game total pinfall and then they will eliminate the two lowest scores. They're gonna bowl a game on each pair. There's Anthony Pepe. Anthony Pepe made a deep run at this last year. He actually tied with Jason Couch and uh, they went to a roll-off, and uh, Couch advanced and went on to finish third in the inaugural year of the Proprietors' Cup. Chris Klasinski, haven't talked about him much, an unknown uh, to us up here in the booth, but Chris is bold great, and we will get a chance to talk to him a little bit later as I will be roaming around with the microphone, Pepe. Leaves the 4-6, almost bounced it out. Yeah, he sure did there. Jason Sterner bowled a big last game to get in. He bowled 268 and actually...
tied for ninth, but just one pin ahead of 11th. Yeah, he picked a 4-9 to shoot 268. He did, and he actually tied with Jimmy Cook for the ninth spot. So ninth and 10th uh, was Jimmy Cook and Jason Sterner. But the real story today has been the striking ability of this young man, Sebi Silvestri from Louisville, Kentucky area. He bowled games of 279, 300, and then 300 for 879 to open up the day. Rob Gottschall saying goodbye. See you. Terry Rohr as well, as some folks are starting to shuffle out the door. Some folks that were eliminated did not make the cup. It came to support this event here today. And now a look at A.J. Rice, a two-hander on the left side of the lane. He's wearing the hat today, Matt. He is. <coughs> and there were some comments earlier in the chat about wearing a hat at this event. Um, nobody here has bowlers or tournament officials seem to have said anything or complained, but. I think there's no dress code. If he no. wants to wear a hat, he can wear a hat. At my first ever inside bowling tournament, I, I don't have a dress code either, and Tristan Schott wore a hat. And the, the commissioner of the uh, PBA Tour, Tom Clark, when I saw him at the next time I saw him, he said, hey, I know the guy from your tournament. He wore the hat. And he goes, the PBA needs something like that, a guy with his own personality uh, to draw awareness to him and get some publicity. So uh, nothing wrong with him wearing a hat here today. I have no problem with it. It's yeah, your I own prerogative. I yeah, I don't really either. It won't bother me if I were bowling. Oh, man. So oh. Sterner leaves an 8-10 on lane five and almost a 4-9 for Jimmy Cook. So it looks like they've got them uh, paired up in, in, the, in the way that they qualified. So on lane seven and eight, we have Sebi Silvestri, Justin Veach, A.J. Rice, Chris Klasinski, and Anthony Pepe. And here is Sebi now. Still throwing the gold ball and still striking. And on the other pair here, Adam Barta, Eric Copping, Rick Miller, Jason Sterner, Jimmy Cook. Nice look at Jason Sterner. Yeah, there. he left an 8-10 on the last shot and uh, did not get count. Every pin matters here today. Oh, my God. And there's a blower eight for Man. Justin Veach. We've seen a lot of those twister pins here at Beaver View Bowl. Adam Barta, he'd like to win this event. A lot of fans in the chat. His brother Pete is here. Spent about $500 in scratch-offs here today with the combined <laughs> efforts of Rob Gotchel and a few other folks. We were live streaming scratch-offs earlier when we were <laughs> waiting for the next game to start. Yep. If you want to see uh, pictures of the finalists, head on out to the Inside Bowling Facebook page. And I know that Rick was working on getting some pictures posted over there. Rick Shirebaum, we got to give him a shout out. We want to thank him for all of his hard work here this weekend, updating social media for us and updating down below on your tabs. This is back on fresh, guys. So uh, there is some friction out there. And there's clean back ends. Yeah, we saw at the end of the last block that some of the righties had almost shim wrecked the pair, meaning that from pair to pair, there were so many different uh, righties attacking the pairs differently that it was very difficult to get the same read pair to pair, lane to lane. Kurt Pilon had the best look at the end of the day playing the sixth arrow, but just couldn't muster up enough. He was uh, had too far of a deficit to try to get into the top. 10 bowlers here. 128 came to play this week, and we saw 25 make it to the cashers round this morning. And now we are down to 10. We will take this down to 8, down to 6, down to 4 as Adam Barta, the high roller, 
<laughs> says, take that, Mike Flanagan. There's a 10-pin for you, sir, that is no longer being left up thanks to my bird dog messenger. And Sevy says, striking is my middle name, at least for today it is. Yeah, 879 earlier in the, in the cashier's round. That was awesome to watch. Yeah, I think I'm going to start using your new uh, coined phrase for the cashier's round, the cashier's round, <laughs> which I believe means that you get to head over to the cashier at the casino and pick up a check. Yeah, that would, wouldn't that be nice? Are you Canadian, Matt? That's what it's all about. <laughs> the cashier's round. <laughs> hey. Hey, there was a good-looking strike over there yeah. by our man, Mr. Copping, over on lane number six. Taking a look at Anthony Pepe from the Long Island area. He came down with Frankie Kalka, Alex Cavaniero. Pepe looking for some redemption from last year. This is uh, very similar to what you would find in your local bowling center for a league condition. Yeah, this is, out of all the tournaments I've been to, this is the closest to that. Two-hander Rice getting it going there as well. And here's my question. Out of these two games, how many times will Silvestri miss I'm going to say four and that's what I'm setting the over under at for those of you in the chat for the two games for the two games how many times will he not strike and four. I say four four sounds pretty good <laughs> oh my god I mean that wasn't as bad as some of these nine pins have been but Chris Klosinski there, he would like to say bad things to that nine pin, I'm sure. Jason Sterner, he's uh, obviously emerged as a star on the PBA Tour. He's part of Team Brunswick. Jason Sterner uh, made the show in uh, the most recent one at the Milwaukee Swing. He made a show. Yeah, he bowled uh, West Malott, I believe, correct? Well, he, he won at the Detroit PBA winter swing against West Milan. Oh, okay, that's what I was seeing. Where he bowled 299 and captured his first PBA national tour title. Congratulations to him. Jimmy Cook up on lane number six. 280 max score for Cook still. We interviewed Cook yesterday after a big game and uh, some of the bowlers here this week were a little nervous to get on camera, Matt. They were, yeah. Especially uh, Sebi was a little nervous there. I think I'd be more nervous about going from back-to-back -back 300s and 879. Mudfoot in the chat says, I have to be rooting for my fellow NEBA bowlers, Copping and Pepe. Good luck to them. And Barda, 290 max score. Man, they're just pounding them in there. Pepe did not oh. like that one, but gets one heck of a break right there Anthony Pepe when it's your day it's your day and maybe he will take home this top prize I could certainly see Pepe and Silvestri in the final bowl in each other but look out for this Jason Sterner guy yeah, he's on uh, he's on fire right there's now. a couple of videos out on the PBA YouTube channel showing Sterner needing a few strikes to make it onto some TV shows and he was tough as nails so no stranger to needing some strikes to make a show and 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 he he did strike out to, to make this quote-unquote show here today in the round of 10.
Now keep in mind the two lowest scores will be eliminated total pinfall. So at this point in time, I'm going to grab my wireless and my notepad, and I am going to go down behind the lanes and start working on some scores as they come in here. Miller there, 290 max score, five strikes in a row. Adam Barta there on the left-hand side of your screen, leaving a four pin there. And now it's Pepe's turn. Yeah, total pins from uh, the qualifying rounds have dropped. It is uh, brand new right now. Anything can happen. That's right, Matt Turk. Anything for sure can happen. I am now roaming, and I'm looking at Jason Sterner. We left an 8-10 in the second frame, but every other shot has been 10 back. That one got out there wide. I'm right up on the bowlers down here. I, I got to be careful. It's pretty quiet down here. Jason Sterner after another split. A little bit easier than the A-10. Matt, this is one of the first times this has ever happened, but I'm, I'm coming back to the booth. <laughs> it's just way too uncomfortable down there right now with uh, the silence. Happened, yeah, it really is. It's quiet. A lot of money at stake. So I'm back in the booth. Rick Miller getting her going there still. Mr. Miller, one of our favorites. We've seen him a lot on our InsideBowling.com broadcasts, and we're happy you're here with us oh. to watch these finals. Yes, we are. It should be exciting. Jimmy Cook. A.J. Rice. Anthony Pepe now up on eight. Two seventy nine max score with an open in the first. Oh, he liked it. Do you see him yeah. kind of run that one out? Yeah, that was a good shot. Here's Barda. Barda quietly working on two sixty nine. And Sterner mows down the seven. Now, we talked about the over-under of Mr. Silvestri here missing four times in two games. So far, he's perfect through seven, looking for eight in a row. And he tore up the fresh earlier. And with us having fresh lanes as you move right, yes, he is the clear-cut favorite. Yeah. 
He is minus 160, everyone, is the betting odds on him. <laughs> Pin again. They're all over the place. Veach has got that really nice tight forward roll, and you know that's kind of the uh, equation and the recipe for solid eights. As we look, uh, it's a strike fest, but look, there's a seven, there's a six, there's an eight. But Rick Miller says, I'm not leaving anything, Mike Flanagan. Ain't gonna happen. Now, Mr. Copping, Eric Copping covers the six. Wasn't happy with that shot. Remember, it's a two-game match, total pinfall. Two go home, eight advance. We drop pins again, and we do it all over again on lanes 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. Very talented group of bowlers here today. The top 25 were some of the country's finest, and now we have 10 of the best. And when these bowlers bowl on a pattern that is more conducive to high scoring and an environment for a lot of money against the very best of the best, you're going to see a lot of strikes up on the board as Pepe now, bird dog, saws out the seven. A lot of strikes on that pair, a lot of strings. And it is total pins out of all ten. It is not one from each pair. It's total pins. Yeah, and after this first game, all bowlers will flip pairs. Now Justin Veach, he's got to kind of get it going here. He's had a tremendous working strike ball the entire event. A little misfortune here to get going, but certainly someone that can string them together. Sterner now. Textbook shot right there. Now, Mr. Silvestri looking for his third perfect game of the day. This right here would solidify a chance going into the 10th frame, looking for nine in a row. Gets it. <laughs> that 10 was a little naughty, though. I work for Storm now, Matt, and I think I need to just record every shot he's thrown today. <laughs> yeah, and it's very uh, impressive what he's done with that gold IQ. Let everyone know that ball is for sale <laughs> um, at a local pro shop near you. Wow. Yeah, that thing is striking a lot. And then, you know, here's, here's our boy Pepe who opens up and then says, oh, let me give you seven in a row, the old ham turkey dinner. Yeah. He's hungry. Prediction in the chat, they say 579 for Silvestri. Someone else predicting 590 now. <laughs> Eric Copping's really had a nice event here. Had a chance to meet him yesterday when he bowled a big game as well. We interviewed him. He deserves to be here. He's been bowling phenomenally well. See it's a pin, pin. pin from the back. It knocks out the nine, yeah. Matt. Jimmy Cook, another strike. Now over to Pepe, going nice and hard and straight. Oh. And A little too straight. it out. He's walking down here to the booth, guys. He just keeps walking. Here's Mr. Rice. A lot of buzz about this guy throughout the country. Another strike for Mr. Rice. Rick Miller says, I may not be as flashy as these other left-handers here today, but right now, easy does it. And Adam Barta just pitches one out the window. Here we go now. Misses the head pin to the right. But all eyes now on Sebi Silvestri on lane number eight. 
He's already bowled 879 today. Now he's in a new round, looking for the front 10. Gets it. 10 in a row, and he's not playing your father's left-handed line. <laughs> he's moved in a little bit. He's opening up the lane. Chris Klasinski. Big double for him. He can still finish with 213. Adam Barda now does cross over, picks the spare. Back over to Sebi Silvestri. Looking for 11 in a row. It's like deja vu here today, man. Yeah, it really is. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, a blower nine pin. Wow. <laughs> Throw it better, Sebi. Throw it wow. better. Wow. Now, Jason Sterner. Turner still has 232 left if he can fill it up. Justin Beach can shoot 210. Barda's going to be in the 230s. 236 for Adam Barda. I suggest you grab a notepad at home and write down these scores. Adam Barta, 236. Sterner. Nice shot. 232 for Jason Sterner. Two eighty nine for Silvestri. And now here's copping up in the 10th frame on lane number six. He's got 279 left. Rick Miller, he can take the high game jackpot with 290 still. Yep, by one. There is no high game jackpot, no. but. In our heads there is. Jimmy Cook can still shoot 259. Veach here, big finish for him. If he fills it up here, it'll be 210. 210 for Justin Veach. So copying string is going to be done, but still in great shape to advance heading into game number two. Rick Miller, what do you say? Mike Flanagan, there's 10 in a row for you. Thank you, Rick. I'm really impressed with this kid, Jimmy Cook. He throws it phenomenally well. And Pepe now, after having two opens, can throw 10 strikes for 245. That sounds rougher than it is. Oh. Fortunate not to leave the big four there for Mr. Pepe. Anthony will tell you, if we interviewed him right now, that he would not be real happy with how he's throwing the ball right now. Rick Miller, 290 for Rick Miller. Great game, Rick Miller. 268 for Eric Copping. Looks like 254. Jimmy Cook. A.J. Rice gets the first hit in the 10th. 247 max score for him. For some reason, A.J. Rice was not put with uh, with Pepe, Klusinski, Veach, and Silvestri. As I was looking at our lane pairings here. A.J. Rice, another strike. He's going to be in the 240s. Pepe is going to be in the 230s. Important here for Klasinski 
to get that hit there. He did not get it. So Klosinski's going to have the low game on these two pairs. Pepe looks like 235. 235 for Pepe. Klusinski, uh spares it up. AJ Rice, 240. Whoa. Is that a seven count? 244. And Klusinski, if you go back over to that pair, Matt, Klusinski had 200 even. There's so a good look. 200 <coughs> even. Look at the scores there from seven and eight. Yeah, and, and Chris Klosinski's 200 game was the lowest game bowled. Justin Veach's 210 uh, was the next lowest. So those are the two guys that are at risk of getting eliminated right now. We'll go over the numbers again. 290 for Rick Miller, 289 for Sebi Silvestri. Then it was 268 for Eric Coping, 254 for Jimmy Cook, 244 for A.J. Rice. 236 for Adam Barda. Jason Sterner, 232. Feech had 210. And Chris Klasinski, 200 even. So that's how it shakes out going into our second game. Right down to it. And they wasted no time getting going into the second game. Oh, no. So we're cutting down to the top eight. Two will be eliminated, and they'll go over and do it again on nine and 10 and 11 and 12. They will attack a new, fresh pair of lanes. Mike Flanagan, Matt Jurek, happy to be bringing you the coverage here of the 2013 Proprietors Cup. It's the round of 10. This weekend's coverage brought to you by the great company of Turbo 2-in-1 Grips. Turbo is driven to bowl. You can check them out on the web at turbogrips.com. Also, must, must, must give a, a big thank you and a shout out to all the folks over at Ace Mitchell. If it wasn't for Ace Mitchell putting on the, the Friday night Ace Mitchell team challenge, a lot of the folks would not even be in town to make this event so successful. So a special shout out to, to Scott Shreve and, and all of the folks over at Ace Mitchell. Scott Shreve, really the point man for this event from Ace Mitchell, and uh, just a pleasure to work with him now two years in a row. Lori Moraz and her husband were here as well. Her husband works for Ace Mitchell. They were here Friday night. They sat in a booth. Not only do they sponsor the event, but they come out and they support it. It's great to see. It is great to see. Look at that, carry. That's the twister pins here on this Brunswick Pro Lane surface. Rick Miller picking up where he did the last game, spared and then went off the sheet. So hopefully he'll spare here and, and maybe go off the sheet and he'll have a, a, a duplicate, not a triplicate, but a duplicate, <laughs> 290. Jimmy Cook coming in a little light on lane number seven. It'll be interesting to see how the two lanes play differently for these players. Sebi Silvestri, does he think they're any different? Oh, uh oh, that's the second time he missed now. Yeah, in, in and these it's two four. Games. The over under is four. Yes, it is. Minus one sixty. <laughs> so he leaves. Uh, he leaves the six. So right now, action is hot and heavy and dangerous, and a lot of strikes, a lot of shrapnel flying around on the lanes. Beaverview Bowl, we're in Dayton, Ohio today. Just a little after three o'clock here on the Eastern time zone. If you're out barbecuing today and you got us hooked up to your outdoor inflatable projection screen, thank you. Uh, I'd like to know where you pick one of those up at. There's a lot of good places uh, where you can pick those up at online. 
or if you just happen to be snuggling up next to your loved one and you've got the computer open on your bed, thank you for watching today. I got to hand it to a guy like Jason Sterner. I was messing with him down there uh, when we were taking the picture. He was right in the middle, and I was trying to get everybody to smile, and I said, go ahead, Jason, tell me that Storm is number one, <laughs> and he gives me the whole look. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jason Sterner is part of Team Brunswick, and, and Sterner and, and his team of Brunswick, I got a lot of respect for those guys, the way that they handle themselves out on the PBA Tour. They're a team. They work together and uh, wish them all of the success in the world. I, being a member of Team Storm, marketing director for Storm, uh, I believe some of our products are speaking for themselves here this weekend, but without all the other ball companies out there, um, our sport would be in a lot more world of hurt than it already is. But events like this, every once in a while, is a way to help resuscitate our bowling economy and really bring bowling to the forefront. So it's uh, some carry there. It's certainly a treat to be bringing you this action here today. Anthony Pepe had a lot of strikes the first game, but unfortunately, uh, a couple of opens. I look for Pepe to really buckle down this game. Adam Barta appeared to leave the 7-10, and these twister pins said, oh, no, no, no. We will take care of that for you, Adam Barta. So Silvestri with 289 the first game and Miller at 290. As long as they don't just bowl very piss poor here this next game, uh, they are going to advance. Eric Copping with 268 is looking quite nicely as well, along with Jimmy Cook's 254. But from there, the other six, A.J. Rice, 244. Adam Barta, 236. Pepe, 235. Sterner, 232. Veach, 210. And Klesinski, 200. Those are the bowlers who are really keeping an eye on their scores early on here in game number two of this two-game total pinfall elimination round. And Veach, that's a disaster for him, the 4-6-7. We're looking for a team triple on lane seven and AJ it looks like was not able to deliver on that and he's just striking it well Silvestri says there you go guys I'm back on it I know the over unders for no AJ's up now actually looking for the team triple oh they got it <laughs> Adam Barter your leadoff bowler for team triple <laughs> along with Eric Copping also. This would be fun if it was a team event. Although three against two I don't think is fair, even if you do have Jason Sterner. So look at uh, Jason right now. Sterner. Uh, oh, maybe not. Giving a shout out to Sean Rash, wants to reset himself. Talk about that 299 Sterner bolt on TV. Rash was in the front row at one o'clock in the morning watching this because uh, they truly are, they do work together and uh, Rash has taken Sterner under his wing and uh, Sterner had like the front six and started hooping it up and Rash looked at him and gave him a death stare. And said, <laughs> Calm down, concentrate and immediately Sterner just totally Changed his demeanor, off. yeah. Well, there's some carry. That was it. Look at him. <laughs> I know Sterner's got a lot of friends out on tour, too. I know Matt Freiberg's very close to him, and I know they're, they're very good friends. And, and, and Sterner's a guy, too, that, you know, after Boland's done, you know, he'll go in the bar and, and have one or two drinks and, and say hello and talk with some of the folks sticking around watching the event and then heads out. 
Wow, a blower, 7-10 for Eric Copping. Copping bowled 268 coming in, so he's got a little bit of room there, a little wiggle room. Some tweets coming in. If you guys want to tweet, go ahead and use the hashtag inside bowling. Your tweets will appear on the screen like so. The People's J. Can we see a 710 get converted? No. no that would have been cool, though. It sure would have been. With could've all the other stuff we've seen today, it we wouldn't have surprised we me. We could have posted that on YouTube and gotten 100,000 views. That would have been like 40 cents. <laughs> <laughs> now, Justin Veach is in a uh, must-strike situation. He, he needs to put a big string together. Um, I don't see the score slowing down at all. Uh-oh, Sebi has missed again. He has now left the six. Three? He has missed three, three times. times. Anthony Pepe is taking another re rack. Pepe's uh, got some mental things going on here today. But a actually, as I, I can see it from here up in the booth, it was, it was, was a bad it rack, yeah. Oh, man. Adam has missed the head pin a twice. Couple times now. Yeah. Uh, once on five and six, once on seven and eight. That's usually a timing issue. And when you get to the bottom of the swing, you, your your body's just not in the right spot, and and you pitch one out like that. Fortunate not to leave a ten with it. So now here's Pepe after the re rack, looking to get his striking shoes on. There it is. Fortunate to send the shrapnel over to the seven. Now Sterner. Nine spare, triple, looking for, we'll call it the ham bone this time. Oh, it'll probably be the last time. And we'll call <laughs> it a four bagger next time. Rick Miller. Carry. Boom shakalaka. Tim Biaka Batuka, if you used to play NFL Blitz. My favorite <laughs> name on NFL Blitz. Tim Biaka Batuka. One of these days, not during this particular match, but one of these days, we will do an entire qualifying session with NBA jam terms. <laughs> and now this is interesting. Almost a 3.79 for Silvestri. He has now missed his fourth time. So not as liking to that pair as he was the last pair where he went 2.89. Answer your question uh, on Twitter here. They are using twister pins. Good to see Chris Klesinski getting in on the action on lane number five with a messenger of his own. Well, now Eric Copping over on lane seven and eight. Can you give me that scoreboard on seven and eight real quick? Well, we got to we got to bowler up, but uh, I'll throw it up. Copping now back to back possible <laughs> opens. Pretty critical for him now to go up there. You see the eight one and the five. I th I think he's got to pick this. Veach is just flat out mad. I mean, he is <laughs> he is mad. Strike fest like this, and just trying to strike on every ball. It becomes very, very tiresome. It's a mental grind. It sure is. Not only do you have to repeat your physical shot, you should be repeating your mental shot as well. Rhino Page has an instructional DVD out called Quiet Mind Bowling. And I actually watched it before we came here. I was doing laundry and whatnot, and I popped it in. It was very interesting to watch. Hmm. Man, that's so smooth. Now Pepe. Uh, he's still waiting. Now look, yeah, 
Copping is just uh, hanging out, trying to figure out how he's going to attack this three, four, six, seven. And now it's being swept, swept off. off. What? What happened? Did we miss something down there? I. I had to answer a question. Maybe a pin fell out late, and they're waiting on a respot. And that carry. Yeah, Silvestri leaves a seven, but hey, don't worry about it. We got a guy throwing pins off the corner back there. We talked about it on uh, Friday. I did it again. I saw it that time. It's a three six, a three four six seven ten, and the ten pin fell again when they reset it just now. Okay, the 10 is supposed to go with it. That's right, because yeah. it was a five count. He showed us the scoreboard. Yeah, here, here's the scoreboard again. Yeah, it was a five count. Shows it there. <laughs> so uh, the first noise I've heard from down there, everyone's laughing. Yeah, something happened. So we're waiting for the 10. If you want, I could run down there and just grab a pen from nearby go. and set it up. Yeah, Somebody's like this guy's doing right here. Yeah. So, hey, we hope you're enjoying this coverage here today. We're pushing 400 viewers in the Proprietors Cup. Yeah, while we're waiting for this to uh, be reset, it's getting swept off again. Bring it into the booth for a minute, Matt. How we doing, everybody? Mike Flanagan, Matt Turek here with you. Is, uh, scores and strikes are plenty. I'm actually glad I don't have my bowling shoes on you're right now. You're telling me, man. There's no way I could keep up with this action at all. No. I Absolutely not. There's no way I could strike as much as these guys. I, there's just no possible no way. No way. Not at all. Nope. Not, Sebi is just on fire. It has been all day long. I couldn't imagine bowling a 300 any time this year. Nonetheless, two back-to-back -back with a 279, and every game knowing you have a chance at 300 is just insane. It's almost like they're just kicking the pins down. <laughs> but back to action. Eric Copping, can you pick this, sir? Oh, oh yeah. Man, that was Well, awesome. he had like an hour to think about it. Yeah. There's a good question here in the chat about Zeke Beta. Do you want to address that? Uh, well, I mean, there was an error with the score. Uh, some way, somehow, uh, the tournament office entered it in as, uh, as 60 pins more somewhere as they were totaling up the block. I don't know how they were totaling it in the back office, but, you know, the, the information that we had is Zeke had 60 more pins than he actually knocked down. So... When we were covering everything, we thought we had a tie for the for the tenth spot, mm -hmm. um, but then you know there was a long break, and they were back there double and triple checking some scores, and they came across an error that they had made, and and thank goodness that they did because Zeke even said, "Hey, I want this thing to be right," and if he didn't earn it, and you know Zeke, he shouldn't be here. Zeke took it very classy. He, yeah, he I, did. I went up to the desk and I, I wanted them to prove that that Zeke had shot yeah. thirteen thirty nine the yeah, last, and, and that's what he did bowl. Yeah. So, and he took it very well. Yep. So that's a class act for Zeke. And hopefully he's, he's at home wa or at the hotel watching. Well, he's got about ten grand coming to him from the USBC Open Championships. Yeah. And uh, if you want to find out when those checks get mailed out, you should email Jeff Riggles directly. And I'm completely joking. That's a joke. If you know Jeff Riggles, that's the number one question he gets asked. <laughs> it annoys him to no end. When do the checks get mailed? So now here's Sterner. Sterner has a possible 254 left. Rick Miller can still shoot 269. Miller is cruising along. Back over to lane seven. Eric Copping after the huge split conversion. Open with a triple, couple of splits, and time to get back on it, Mr. Eric Copping. Blower nine pin. That was a little high. Blower nine. Wasn't as bad as some of the nines and eights we've seen. Jimmy Cook up on lane number eight. Jimmy Cook opened with 254 the first game. And we could hear that one all the way down here at the booth loud and clear. Still has 258 left for him. Thanks for the shout out, MR Mars, Mr. Mars 5. Now Barda up. Nobody's bowled on 5 and 6 in a while. No. Oh. Wow. Barda almost leaves a solid 9 10. 
uh, it, with these pins, it wouldn't surprise me. Now here's Pepe. This would be a nice confidence builder for Anthony. Ooh. He's just he's just slightly off. He doesn't have as much room for error as some as the, some of the other guys out here, such as Silvestri. And this guy here, AJ Rice. AJ going more up the lane than Silvestri, and Pepe somewhere right in between. And Rick Miller's playing further out like AJ is. Boy, he really got around that one. Klosinski does not want to go home. Klosinski opened up with 200. He was the low score out of these 10 bowlers in the first game. Still has possible 279 left. He could get to 479. Will that be enough? So bowlers starting to do the math. Might want to squeeze the ball a little bit now as uh, there's a lot of money up for grabs here, Matt. There sure is. $15,500 on top. Yep, and 10th place is $1,384. Ninth place, $1,580. And to advance, 8th place is $1,860. Now here's Sterner back up. Oh. Man, I that thought that out. spinner over there was going to take it down. So Silvestri opened up 289, now up working in the seventh. And now he has missed for his fifth time. So yep. the, o the, over the over is cashed. Wins. Head over to the cashier, as you like to say, Matt. <laughs> the cashier's around. The cage. And copying now. Nice. Nice double after that uh, misfortune. Or I'm sorry, that was just uh, just one. I apologize, I thought he had had the double there. So, But it's fast pace, it's just rapid fire left and right here, five and six, seven and eight, back and forth. Who is going to be eliminated? Oh, wow. Never thought that would happen. Yeah, now Sylvester be... needs to be careful. Shot for AJ. Yeah, AJ's really got it going on now. Now Pepe, open with 235, can only shoot 235, and needs the last six to get there. It all starts here. It looks like he moved further outside and, and amped up his ball speed a little bit. Looked like a good move for Pepe. Now, Jimmy Cook. Says, take some of that. I've got 258 left, and I shot 254 the first game. I'm going to advance, and all of my fans in the chat, who wants to come get on this train with me? <laughs> and Rick Miller says, just another tournament. No big deal. I'm here to seal this deal. Silvestri only with 217 left. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. Sterner up on eight. Yeah, and this is really a shot Jason Sterner's got to have. I really believe that. He's still got 234 left. He does get it. Sterner likes to almost put added pressure on himself. He rises to the occasion. Sterner open with 232 the first game. And this is kind of the wild card here. Klesinski as he 5-7s. Wow, with all the pin action and carry we've seen all week, that's uh, surprising. He's going to have to pick this. Now Barda. Gets it. Barda can shoot, I believe that was 250. 252, I think. Klusinski, he, he went for it. Now Klusinski, the best he can shoot is 245. He bowled 200 the first game. That would put him at 445. This is the max score for him. 445 for Klesinski is all he can get to. <coughs> Jimmy Cook, call him Jimmy Cliff. He can see clearly now that the rain is gone and he's knocking down all obstacles in his way. Now, Justin Veach, he 
bowled the second lowest game the first set, which was 210. Closest to him was Sterner at 232. So 22 pins separate eighth and ninth overall. And this two game total pinfall elimination round of 10. Rick Miller strikes on five again. I've done a couple of shows with Randy Peterson now, and the difference between doing this and, and working on the ESPN truck is there's someone there that tells you in your ear, or at least with the clipboard, like Matt Freiberg and Mike Edwards do out on tour, uh, what the bowlers need to, uh, to advance and what they need to clinch. And up here in the booth, it's a little more tricky. We have to do it all ourselves. So if anybody, <laughs> if, if anybody wants to come down and uh, hold up a dry race board and help us out, be more than happy to have that just giving a little bit of trouble to my friend randy peterson who i need to call back today too yes i'm name dropping that's right wow he he anthony there looked like he he jumped right a little bit on that lane compared to his last shot so coming down to the wire chris klasinski right now if he strikes out, like we said, he can get to 445. Jason Sterner. If Sterner doesn't strike here, he's 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 got a two teen max score. That would be very dangerous. So a strike here in the ninth is essential. Gets wow. Okay. Now here's our man, the wild man. Sebi Silvestri. That's squared. 289. And now he is fighting yeah. this pair, five and six. So the best he can shoot is in the 190s now. Good thing he bowled such a big game last game. Now, Mr. Copping says, I'm going nowhere. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Beach still has 244 left. That would take him to 454. <laughs> Look at that there by Mr. Jimmy Cook. Theo McNair checking in from the Real Bowlers Tour. He says he can now use our names to name drop. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to get yeah. you. <laughs> it might get you a free room at the Dew Drop yeah. Inn. <laughs> The do drop in was used in the movie One Crazy Summer with Demi Moore was in that movie. If you've ever seen One Crazy Summer, the do drop in is where she played her musical gig. And now Pepe, foundation, ninth frame. Oh, wow. Jeez. Wow. I just dropped my pin on that one. That. Wow. That was sick and nasty that and thing ugly. That was at like 40 degrees. Yeah, and it's like a four pin. Yeah. And now uh, Barta four, four nines, nines, and it, now it's getting interesting. Here we go. Here we go. That was definitely an ouch Barta top dog man too. Nick wants to know, where's GG3? GG3 just left the building. He said goodbye to us. He did not make this round. So now the best Barta can shoot is 2-0. He shot 236 the first game. I would go for count here. Wow. Especially wow. after watching Jason Sterner's shot. Sterner opened up with 232, Barta 236. Barta's trying to do the math. He knows this is trouble. Here's a shot here. Bart is going to be watching Klasinski. Oh, and he gets it. So Klasinski can shoot 245. That would take Klasinski to 445. Barta opened up with 232. If Barta just gets one, oh. no, he went for it. So Barta in trouble. Barta shoots. We'll find out here in yeah, just a sorry, second. Mike. Here is the scoreboard from seven and eight. Actually, Barta two oh seven puts him 
at 4.43. There it is again. Sterner spares. He can go to 2.13. That would put him at 4.45. Now Veach bowled 2.10 the first game. He can shoot 2.44. He's going to be in the 2.30s now. Eric Copping. That was a nice ball. Splits the 8-9. Now Silvestri looking for the double in the 10th. Yeah, he gets it going now. So he's got 197 left to go with his 289. He bowled the first game. Sterner can shoot 213. And he does shoot 213. Here's 7-8 and eight score again. So that's 445 for Sterner, which is two pins more than Adam Barda. It is possible that Barda and Sterner could both be out. Now Veach, that was big for Veach. Veach, I believe, can shoot 233. That would put him at 443, which would be tied with Barda. Wow. Got all these ties. It's a tie weekend. Tie guy. I'm wearing a tie next time. Tie guy. Yeah, when you play Baccarat, everybody <laughs> just looks at you and say, play tie guy. Tie guy. Play the tie, tie guy. guy. Dragon. Tie guy. So now Jimmy Cook. <laughs> Natural seven. Striking. So Veach does shoot. Give me a scoreboard here, Matthew. On 233. It was Veach. 233. Cut. 233 puts him at 443, tied with Barda. Silvestri finished with 197. That puts him at 486. Silvestri is going to advance. It was 245 for Copping. He's in easy. 513 for Copping. Now Pepe can shoot 214. Pepe had 235 the first game. Important here. Oh no. Oh, that, that really jumped on him. So Pepe now can only shoot 202. That would put him at 437, which puts him in serious jeopardy of not advancing. AJ strikes. Pepe's now below both Veach and Barda. So Pepe is going to be going home. Jimmy Cook on 7 and 8 finishes with... Sorry, Mike. 257. That's 511 for Cook. A.J. Rice striking like there's no tomorrow. A.J. had 244 the first game. So it looks like we have a breakdown yeah, on, five on five and six. So Rick Miller still to finish. A.J. Rice still to finish. Anthony Pepe finishing out right now. You heard it here. Anthony Pepe is not going to advance. 202 for Pepe. That's 437 for Pepe. Now AJ Rice still has 268 left. Package that with his 244 that he bowled the first game. AJ Rice is going to advance. Someone moved our camera. A little bit's not bad. Which camera? This pair or yeah, the other? This pair. It's not bad though. Rick Miller bowled 290 the first game. He had the highest game. And now 268 to go with it. Nice bowling by Rick Miller. I bet he's ready for another game on, on these two pairs. 558. Very strong, Mr. Miller. Show the scoreboard here. And now Chris Klasinski bowled 200 the first game. He can shoot 245. If he shoots 245... 
He will go around Barda and Veach, and Veach and Barda will be forced to roll off <laughs> for the last spot. <laughs> so all eyes right now on our man, Chris Klesinski, the unknown gentleman. And oh. that's going to do it for Klesinski. Klesinski will be out, and Anthony Pepe also will be out. Final score for A.J. Rice, Matt? 268. He almost, he almost spared that split. 512 for Rice. Klesinski, 209 it looks like. 209 for Klesinski. So he shoots 409. So here's your rundown. Silvestri shoots 486 and advances. Veach 443 ties with Barda. They both advance. AJ Rice 512 and advances. Klesinski out with 409. Pepe out with 437. Hopping in with 513. Miller in with a huge 558. Sterner in with 445. And Jimmy Cook in with 511. We will be back with the round of eight here in just a moment. You're watching continuing coverage of the 2013 Proprietors Cup live here from Beaverview Bowl here in Dayton, Ohio. Mike Flanagan, Matt Turek back here with you for the Proprietors Cup round of eight. We are down to eight bowlers now. <clears throat> yes, we are. Action, no practice action is just getting underway. Yep. Lanes five and, or I'm sorry, nine yeah, and 10, 11 and 12 now. Happy to be bringing you this action. Thanks for all the people watching. And here's what's cool. We've still got eight studs out there bowling on the lanes including that man right there, A.J. Rice. And an oldie but a goodie, kind of like the Elvis Presley song we were just listening to, there's Rick Miller. And uh, It's Now or Never was the song we just heard coming out of our break. And it is now or never for the next couple of sprints to the end. Two game total pins. They'll bowl on 11 and 12 and 9 and 10. Everybody will. And it's not an earthquake here. It's actually people moving around our table down there. There's our man, Jimmy Cook. Jig178 uh, wants to know who shot that 879. That was Sebi Silvestri. Yep. Yep. You, got, you heard it. And I... I'm going to set the over-under on how many times Sebi's going to miss on these two pairs at six. <laughs> and what, uh, what's the line there? Not just at six. Six is a push. You can bet either way. Oh, Barda's starting out rough. Barda doesn't look like he's got his A game today, but he's a survivor, and he will survive. Cake reference there. Uh, Donna Summers, I believe, I will survive. Oh, hey, original. Cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Say you, say me, Adam Barta. Say it for always, naturally. Having fun, thinking about some music. We've got a long drive home, Matt Turek, but we're sure far do. away from that. Yes, we are. We're at least 10 more eight pins away. That's right. Is it true that uh, you and I get a commission from uh, the prize fund of this event from each bowler? From each bowler. For saying nice yeah. things about them up in the chat? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I heard that. It's like a 15% I heard. Yeah. I think uh, everybody that's viewing in the chat, we'll share with them. We'll pass it on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the chat. Do I get 30% then? So here's Rick Miller. Rick Miller just shot 558 in the round before this. Yeah, that's no joke. Rick Miller, I'll tell you what. If, if Rick Miller throws eight in a row at any point in time again here, I am going to give him a new self-proclamation. I 
I think Justin Veach is going to get it going this block after the split, but I believe still, even with that, he is going to, uh, I'm going to predict he's going to advance. Get a Deadwood retrieval here yeah. on lane number nine. We'll uh, take a look at the technique of removing this Deadwood. Oh, there's a there's a an air right there already touching the lane. Yeah, but there's no oil down there, man. That's true, but when I used to work in bowling centers, we would get chewed out to no end for touching the lane. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. I've retrieved a lot of Deadwoods. I, yeah, well, I know. I have. I've paid and, my and I share. walk on the lane down. I lane. do. I do. And actually, even at my uh, StormInsideBowling.com open that I host each year. I uh, I actually walk the back ends. I walk every lane, and yeah. I'm stepping on them to make sure yeah, that. But there is no oil, like you said. But, right. But even so, at but the, there are there are the, people that will. Well, complain. this was the proprietor that would. Uh, the, the bowlers didn't care. The yeah. proprietor would would reprimand you. I know where it came from though, because well, a bowler one bowler time complain, called yeah. the proprietor, and the proprietor yeah, didn't yeah. say, "Dude, there's no oil down there." Instead, yeah. he said, "Okay, I'll tell my guys." Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Educate the customer, and a lot of good things can come from that. And speaking of educating, this guy here is educating all of us. Eight seventy nine in the qual or in the cashiers round, right, Mike? That's right. <laughs> the cashiers round, as a? Matt likes to call it. That's what it's all about. What's going on? Oh, he's getting that lucky break. In here. Look at him. He, he knows it's it. a break, too, even this yeah. early. Yeah. Look, he still loves Look at it. it. <laughs> <laughs> he just started the lawnmower, I yeah. think. <laughs> nice conversion. That's that's a chef, uh, well, on this China pattern. Um, here in the chat, HHJJJ says, apparently the announcers don't bowl enough to know what carry down is. And um, HHJJJ, what I was speaking of is when you walk down lane to get a deadwood down in front of the pins, there, there is no oil prior to a block when I walk the back ends for my tournament. And because there's only been five or six, seven, eight balls thrown on this, on this pair, and, and, it was a fr and, it and it was a fresh pair, it was, it was no big deal. Yes, at the end of a long day block, yes, there could perhaps be some oil that traveled down lane. And yes, if you stepped on it, uh, it could make a fraction of a difference. Yeah, but throwing a shot at the same target, at the same spot that you walk, I mean, granted your foot is a lot larger surface area, but it would essentially do the same thing. The ball would still pick the oil up and move it shot after shot just as there's your foot a, There's a lot more of a chance of a bowling ball affecting that more than yeah. you going down to retrieve a deadwood at 55 Five feet. feet. Yeah, yeah, right. So, but thank you for the uh, for the mention there as we've gone way too overboard on retrieving <laughs> a deadwood. Yeah. We'll, we'll get back to that's the action. A, yeah, that's a conversation for a, a qualifying ball. Yes, it is. Because right now these guys here, as I coined them, the eight studs, the eight studs of the tournament here, 128 came to play, as we mentioned earlier, and now we are down to eight. 120 have gone home or are here watching in person. So now here's our man, Jimmy Cook. Man, through the face for a 4-6. What's going on here? These pairs are a little tricky. Starting now up on 11. Coming off a break, I have a feeling this is 10 back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knows it. And I'm going to tell you what, this guy, he likes to hoop it up, and Sean Rash isn't here to tell him to keep his nerves <laughs> down. So who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, I know it. Well, they're bowling quickly right now. Yeah, it's rapid fire. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go back to my room. This is a fresh pair. Every pair they move to is a fresh new pair. <laughs> Pete Barda checking us out in the booth. Ooh, rap time. We 
We get the best guests in the world. Everybody knows it. And joining us now, we see Adam Barda up on the lane looking to trip a two-penny. Can't roll it, but now joining us is Pete Barda. He's been with us before. Hi, Pete. How are you? Hi, Mike. Yourself? Doing well, bud. Doing very, very well here. Pete Barda joins us. Pete, it's been a fun weekend here in Ohio. Happy to see you out. I've missed you at the last couple of events. Yep. Been, been pretty busy working on a lot of things and finally getting back out here. Needed to get away. It's been a great weekend. Hey, your new hairdo looks great, by the way. Yeah, well, are you like 25 now? Because you've been aging in reverse all weekend. Yeah, pretty much. A guy yesterday, they were trying to guess the ages of myself and Adam and thought Adam was six years older than me. <laughs> so I'll take it. Oops, say, look at that. They Chris want to know Asker. how you did in the scratch-offs earlier. Uh, not good. And, and just, just so everybody knows, it wasn't just you playing. You guys, a bunch of people pooled a bunch of money for yeah, this. Yeah, me, Gotchel, Terry Rohrer, uh, Jim Cook. So it was a lot of fun. It was fun. It was fun to watch. We were live streaming it earlier. As a matter of fact, when we were done, the state of Ohio hired four people. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. To do, do some road projects. <laughs> Does it go to roads here? I, I don't know. What in Missouri, it goes to schools, uh, goes to the schools. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I think in Ohio, it's supposed to go to the schools, but they <laughs> do they kind of do whatever they, they, do want, what they it. want. Yeah. So I have to say, guys, just while we're kind of watching that, from last year to this year, Billy Eisholt and his crew did a did a fantastic job. I mean, last year there were some some problems. I was one of the people that was pretty vocal about how upset I was about different things that happened. And man, did they do a, they really did a good job. The team event ran smooth. There was a lot, 64, five person teams were here. They had a hundred and some entries in, in the main tournament and it ran smooth. Um, I saw some things that, that you don't see at a lot of tournaments that I really like how they, and I know it's a pain, but they'll move people on the left lane to the left and the right lane to the right. And one of the things I like about that is you get the cross with different people and you kind of get to you know chat with people you don't get to see you're not crossing with the same group the whole time yeah absolutely very unusual leave here yeah. for jimmy cook the three four seven wow yeah it is sebi silvestri has just been absolutely on fire yeah. lights out today he tied the house record earlier and, he, and then he shot he almost shot another 300 yeah yeah, he we did. set the over-under on the first uh, two games of how many times he would miss at four, and the over cashed, and now it is set at six, Pete Barda, for this particular two-game set. Right after this, they cut to six? No, no, no. We, oh. we set the over-under on how many times Sebi would miss oh, really? at six total times that he doesn't strike. Yeah, by the way, where where is he? I don't know him. He's I mean. from Louisville, Kentucky, with uh, the Antonio Medina, Mike Wolf, Brett Shepard, Chris Hester clan. Okay. Well, Chris, Derek Roseberry him. guys. Brett, I know. Uh, I don't. I don't really think I've seen this guy around, but I, he's pretty smooth. He really is, and he's got a good head on his shoulders. Is look at that break there for AJ Rice. This guy with the hat on backwards. I love it. <laughs> and we were talking about uh, an oldie buddy goodie, but Rick Miller here. What a great uh, swing. What a great style. That's really withstood the test of time, Rick Miller. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't really like the look that he had yesterday. I was talking with him, and then, you know, when they came back for that second six, I think he kind of made a move, and obviously he got in there. But a lot, a lot of quality bowlers. I mean, there were some strong bowlers here. A lot of ladies bowled too. Yeah, I don't know about were. the main. I don't know about the main event, but they certainly bowled in the. Um, the team tournament on Friday night. Yeah, we need to make mention that Shannon Plahowski won this event last year. She did bowl this year, did not make the round of 25, but uh, really excited. Uh, her and Megan are expecting a baby, and uh, they're getting ready for that, and Shannon's also getting ready to go bowl the Women's U.S. Open, so good luck to her. And actually, Adam had a, a lady bowl with him on Friday night and got to know her a little bit. She's a Kim Mann. No. <laughs> really, really nice. Uh, Shannon, is it Lebinsky? Yeah, I think Shannon it's Lebinsky. Uh, really, really nice lady. Uh, throws the ball well. And for I always say Kim Mann when I think of Adam because of the hammer affiliation. Yeah. And uh, 
He also bowled with Mike Kahn, who I had not met previously, and boy, that kid's pretty good. He's another Louisville guy, I believe. Is he? He's pretty good. He, he throws the ball nice. And from what I understand, he was a pretty good college bowler. Kim Mann in the chat actually says, I'm not good enough to bowl with Adam. <laughs> wow. So who are the low two right now? And don't, well, just and, and, game, don't, and don't say Adam. Game number one, we don't really know yet. We're just kind of taking a gander here at the scores. Um, right now, Jimmy Cook off to a rough start. Here's the uh, 11 and 9 and 10 score. Eric, AJ. Oh. A lot of splits. A lot of splits. Yeah. I know when Adam left the big four the first the first frame, he anticipated because they were fresh they would be a little bit tighter than, than they actually are. And um, he did strike the second time on that lane. It's another another open there. Yeah. It's Eric copying, isn't it? That it is. There he is right there. What's his Superfly the bottom open the lower double. two. Open double spare, strike spare. The lower two will get dropped from this two-game round. Just like last round, we do it all over again. And by the way, anybody that's listening, I don't know. I think also that they, they, they dropped the uh, entry fee. They did. From 1100, 1100 yeah. to 550, right? Right. And they got, a, they got a lot of guys. And another thing that helped them is there's, there's not... Uh, well, there may be some PBA card holders here, but the uh, the main PBA guys weren't here. I don't know if they scared, if those guys when they were in town scared guys away or what, but I'm not sure what they yeah. were doing. From what I understand, a lot of them may be overseas. Is there something going on overseas? Uh, I'm not sure. There was just a tournament overseas. I don't remember which one it was, but I, I saw a lot of folks posting about it. I believe I just got an email from West Pie from Storm telling us, about how some of our guys, Stu Williams, Don Barrett, those guys, but I, I, I've been consumed with this event. Haven't had a chance to, to really get in there and see. I got to uh, meet Stu Williams and talk to him a little bit out at the Masters in another, in another tournament. Interesting guy. He's kind of unique the way he throws the ball. Yeah, he, he really is. He but just kind of... Just yeah. short arms it almost. And he shot he shot three hundred at the Masters. Yeah. I met him at the Reed Hawthorne. I Actually that's where there. I met yeah, him, yeah. yeah. That's you where I met him too. first and then a, a couple weeks later or whatever it was at the uh the Masters in uh, New Jersey. Mm hmm So Adam's got one sixteen or whatever in the sixth. Adam Barta has a max Throw score of two thirty six. There we go. That is 11 and 12. We're going to take it back over to 9 and 10 while the shot being made. It's hard to get these scoreboards up. They bowl so quickly. That's Jimmy Cook. Jimmy, nice triple there. And still shoot 230. Bail out this game. Rick Miller left a 7 pin. Rick's going at a 228 pace. And from what I understand, Mike, you can correct me, but somebody said there's these are twister pins. Is that true? It is. It is. Yeah, we've been talking about that most of the tournament. They throw the pins all over the place. A little bit different carry. I do believe it's kind of all in everybody's head, too, because there are house characteristics as well that come into play with carry, more so than the pins, in my opinion. Mike, you're down there. Are the scores on the on nine and ten lower or higher than those on eleven and twelve? Well, we got a max score of two forty four for AJ, two thirty for Eric, two forty six for Silvestri, and Mr. Cook can shoot two thirty. So that's about two thirty five overall average pace. Lanes eleven and twelve, two forty eight for Rick Miller max score. Barta can shoot 236, 235 for 
Jason Sterner and 214 for Veach. So pretty similar if you ask me. There you go, Adam. That was a nice shot for Adam. Now this high roller on the front of uh, Adam's shirt, High Roller Pro Shop, could you tell us a little bit about that? That's Jim Hilligus' uh, website, Pro Shop. It's inside. In this in this area. It's inside Woodman Lanes. Yeah, he's supposed to be wearing a, a National Amateur Bowler Ranking shirt, but uh, he used one Friday and one Saturday, so i got to load them up. You're going to have to get another. Another color. Yeah. Maybe we could throw inside bowling on that shirt, too, maybe? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You guys do a fantastic job. Thank you. We always appreciate the kind words. Well, I'm going to broadcasting school sometime in the next year, I promise. I don't think you need to. <laughs> oh, man. Look at Sterner. Wow. Yeah. That was pretty big right there. These doubles headed into the 10th frame on 230 max scores are really, really important right mm -hmm. now. And, you know, as much as people like to rip on the twister pins, I believe the twister pins actually helped Jason on that particular shot. Yeah. Now, 10th frame for A.J. Rice. I really like the way this kid throws the ball. It's my first chance to cover a tournament with him really bowling. And he's, uh, I love the look with the black shirt, black hat on backwards. He's got 244 left. Justin Veach, that's way inside a target. Leaves one of the toughest spares to make in today's modern game. But because we're on a house type condition, it's a little bit easier to pick. Come on, Adam. There's your man, Adam Barta. Pete Barta joining us in the booth, his brother. Oh, come on. So Barta can shoot max score 215 if he spares and strikes out. Remember, the two low scores are going to be eliminated after these two games. They're going to flip pairs and bowl again. It'll be total pinfall. So the one guy can only go 2-0 on that pair, right? 2-0, yes. Veach or whatever you yes, said his name is? Justin Veach. So A.J. Rice is going to be in the 230s, 233. And my man Eric Copping can shoot 230. So it's pretty tight. What's that there? That guy, that's uh, 66, 86, so there's an 06. So A.J. Rice, 233. A.J. Rice is from Salem, Alabama, all the way in from Alabama here to participate in the Proprietors' Cup this year. By the way, Mike, I want to take a second and congratulate you on your job there with Storm. Thank Could, you very much. Couldn't happen to a better guy. I mean, you're deeply involved in bowling, and I'm sure you're going to do a fine job for those guys. Looking forward to it, that's for sure. Eric Copping, 216. Eric making the trip all the way in from Websterville, Vermont. Wow, that's a drive. That is a drive. Nice shot. Jimmy Thanks. Cook. From Indianapolis, Jimmy with a possible 230 off the sheet, max score. Jason Sterner, first hit in the 10th. We saw it. Now, Selby Silvestri, Sebi Silvestri, 246 max score here. Oh, kicking that six pin forward. Something I noticed with him watching him, if he gets a little long with his swing, is when he doesn't carry, which isn't which isn't often, by the way. The guy's just, just a machine. Now Sterner leaves the seven there. It looks like he got through that ball almost too good. He posed the shot perfectly, projected the ball down lane, and it just didn't quite finish. One or two boards further to the right, it would have picked up to the dry a little bit sooner, and it would have been ten back. Sterner can shoot 224. Rick Miller finishes with 225. So scores going down a little bit, guys. Yeah, nobody's really got a big, big game, right? I don't think. I don't see anything. I don't see anything either. Silvestri can shoot 246, and that would lead this particular round after game number one. 
Wow. Wow, yeah. So Copping 216, Sterner 224, Miller 225, A.J. Rice 233 already in the books. Adam Barta first strike up in the 10th frame. He's got a possible max score of 215. Justin Veach now very important for him to get a double here and shoot 200 as all the scores are very bunched up together. Veach is a guy that can get it going and can strike for a very long time, but not He's lined up properly. Shoot 189 maybe? Yeah, if he spare strikes, it, he'll be in the 180s, 189. And Silvestri now, 233. Come on, Adam. Nice. There oh. you go. Gives oh. it the double look, a little stare down there. So okay. if it was only one game, Pete Barta, your man Adam would be going home. But luckily it's two games, and he's right in the hunt. He's right in the thick of it. Right where he wants to be. Alive. There, there go. you Adam. go. So Adam Barta, 215. <clears throat> yeah, Kim and Les Man on the chat. I saw Hester. There he is. There's scoreboards from 11 and 12. So... You got, uh, I'll give you the rundown here, guys. 233 for both Silvestri and A.J. Rice. Then it was 225 by Rick Miller, 224 for Jason Sterner, 219 for Jimmy Cook, 216 for Eric Copping, 215 for Barda, and Justin Veach bowled 189. Wow. Every pin counts. They're going to flip pairs. It won't be long. We'll have action underway here on our second game of this round of eight elimination matches. Hi, Chris Hester. Looking at the chat, Matt. See Bobby Benton's watching. We got a lot of Barda Nation guys on there. We sure do. So a quick break in the action here. We want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we will archive all this footage on YouTube. There's a lot of great tournaments already on our YouTube channel. If you own a pro shop or you just like to watch bowling, while you're cleaning the house, hook it up to your flat screen, plug in one of our archives and, and watch some great bowling and listen to some amazing coaching tips as we get some great professionals up in the booth yeah. that will help you with your game. Coach K at the last event. Jeff Carter. Yeah. Uh, did a great segment at Bull Expo with Hank Boomershine and Victor Marion discussing core concepts, the cores that go into the bowling balls. I'll have that up this week. A lot of good stuff out there. You know, people buy these DVDs and learn about bowling. You can learn a lot about bowling by watching our webcasts. Action underway, game number two. As I mentioned before, A.J. Rice from Salem, Alabama. Sweet home, Alabama. Jason Sterner, of course, is from Riverdale, Georgia. Competes in the Real Bowlers Tour. Theo McNair and Tim McNair were here. Their team won the Ace Mitchell Team Challenge on Friday yeah, night. they did. They beat out KR Strike Force. What's this iGrind event Chris Hester's talking about next weekend? It's a regional sponsored by iGrind Bowling Organization. It's a PBA regional in Tenley Park, Illinois, paying 15000 for first. No, Chris, I don't think we're going to be there. I think Adam and those guys are going to uh, St. Clairsville to try and win that, that tournament. They won it like the last couple of years. That's one of those post-to-score type tournaments like the Derby or whatever that they have. So I don't think we'll be there, Chris. Justin Veach from River Ridge, Louisiana, making the trip up. Whoops. Needs a big game here as he bowled 189 the first game. A look at Sebi Silvestri. He's been the talk of the day. Opened up with 879. If you didn't join us earlier and you're just coming onto the webcast, he did bowl 879. Yeah, back to back 300. Yeah. And a 279. The how, many, how many did he have, Mike? Come on, Adam. He had the last five of the first game and then 300, 300. So he yeah. had 29 in a row. 
You know, uh, Pete Barta, talking about Adam, uh, we've watched him on a few shots, missed a head pin to the right, and on that shot there, it kind of looked like the same thing happened to him. Once in a while, his timing gets a little bit off, and when he gets to the line, he just likes to shove the ball to the right a little bit. And it looks like that's what happened on that shot right there. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Man, he should have picked that. the 210. All right. He learns quick. Of course, Adam is from Girard, Ohio. How, how long of a drive is it to get here? It's Pete? about a little over four hours, I think, it took us. Adam drove. He drove a little, little fast. Now, keep in mind, this is in the same state, everyone. Four yeah. hours, and they live in the state. Ohio's a big state. People don't realize it. Yeah, it is pretty big. I see, I see some local people watching, Bob, or on the chat. Bob Haney is a local Warren bowler. I know they're big followers of inside bowling. Inside bowling does a great job. They really do. It's really amazing, Pete. I, I, I often uh, forget that just two and a half years ago, we were streaming from a laptop, walking lane to lane as we bowled a doubles tournament. And, Mike, i got to tell you, you know we travel around quite a bit, and there are people who say, hey, is, is it going to be live stream? Is Inside Bowling going to be there? And Inside Bowling, believe it or not, has an effect on the number of entries. People, <laughs> people lo I'm telling you, people love it. A lot, a lot of the TMBA uh, bowlers, you know, yeah, they want to. There they, were a lot they, of requests for us to go down to Memphis, I believe. They really want uh, inside bowling, and um, you guys do a great job, but you put in a tremendous amount of effort that people don't see. I mean, just being here, I know the hours you guys, you guys put in to put out the quality product that you do, and and it's just it's a tremendous amount of effort. Even keeping up with this, just the moving, people don't realize, you know, yeah, they're even, moving pairs. The work you guys have yeah. to do. Yeah, and, uh, and, you know, and we're our own statisticians. I'm down here. I've got pencil in hand, and uh, and our and I got the, the sheet written down here. I'm keeping track of all the scores, trying to give you the numbers as best as we can, cover this action as best as possible. Yeah, a lot of hours. That, uh, is it Veach? Looks like he's struggling a little bit there. Of course, Adam Ooh, is, too. Oh, carry. Got but hopefully carry. he can pull this out and make it to the next round here. Hey, gets them all. You know, we had a lefty win this tournament last year, and the law of averages would tell you that a right-hander would win this year. Really surprised to see Anthony Pepe not in this group right now. He went home early, two years in a row now after really setting the world on fire he was uh he was the early favorite in this tournament i, I personally i thought he was going to win it in qualifying he was just unbelievable of course he's a great bowler anthony's really good uh, something kind of cool too is uh billy isolt here tournament manager he has done a great job partnering with people all over the country to put on satellites and aj rice jason sterner and jimmy cook all got their way into this tournament by winning satellites throughout the country. Interesting. Matt, what, or I'm sorry, uh, Mike, the, the guy that shot the two 300s, what did he have his first game here? Because it looks like he's struggling he a little is, bit. It does look like he's struggling. Sebi bowled 233. He tied for the highest game with A.J. Rice. But, yeah, Sebi opened up. He, he left the uh, – the two four seven. Yeah, that's so interesting. So he goes Wait open a... strike open, right? Yeah, he left the two four seven. He went high, made an adjustment. Now went light. Has the right lane down, but uh, yeah, I mean, we certainly a developing story. We need to keep an eye on. You know, something funny about Rick Miller. I've been watching him shoot these seven pins. He's left quite a few of them. He stands pretty far to the left to shoot the seven. A lot of people go cross lane at it. He's, he keeps it over on that side of the lane almost the whole way. Wow. AJ that was, really that was just that. overthrown. It was thrown past the break point, amped up a little bit. May have missed it as well. You know, those two-handers, they got to throw it the right way exactly every single time. People say that it's cheating with two hands, but do you know how hard it is to repeat that with that kind of speed? God bless them. I've All been right. really impressed with Eric. Eric's got a really solid game. Well, you can see. 
AJ opens. Here's your man, Barda. Come on, Adam. Mm. All right. The uh, Real Bowlers team won the Ace uh, Mitchell Team Challenge <coughs> Friday night, to answer your question in the chat. Yeah, they followed in some great footsteps. Team Ebonite won the year before with Jason Couch, Dave Wadka, Kelly Kulik, Mike Shady, and Mark McDowell. Somebody put on the chat here, and I'm not sure who it is. We'll see you at the Holiday Doubles. That's that's a really good tournament. Mike's part of that one. It is. Uh, I, look, I look forward to going to that. I had a lot of fun. It was a little bit of a drive for us, but it was worth it. It's another high-scoring event. Again, strong bowlers there, too. Adam bowled with Liz Johnson. That is probably our feel-good event of the year. It's uh, it's like kind of like home over there. Jerry Anderson and his staff do a great job, and they let us kind of come in. Uh, I helped to revamp that tournament. Jerry and I worked together and collaborated on that event the last two years, and we've grown it from 45 entries or so to uh, three full squads of 24 teams. It's only a 24-lane bowling center and one full squad of 36 teams. So do the math. It's 120 teams or so. Is it? At the same place this year, Mike? Yep, the every it year it's at the same location. Uh, Redbird Lanes over in Cahokia, Illinois. It's a smaller bowling center. It's got a real family feel. Um, we actually had up on the masking units uh, this year all of the folks that uh, lost their lives in that tragedy in Connecticut. We did a tribute to them on Friday night. It's all archived on our YouTube channel. Come on, Adam. That's much better. Whoa. Almost 4-9. All right, covered up. Lane 10 it appears to be a, a little bit tighter for Adam. So amp up on 9 and slow down on 10, Adam Barta. Wow, dude. These this guy here, hits. he can't catch a break. These 8s and 9s. Oh, no, that's – I thought that was that uh, – is it Justin Beach? I thought that's no, who that was. No, it's that not was – that was copying. Yeah. Haven't talked much about – Jimmy Cook, he opened up with 219 the first game. He has the first four this game cruising. Saws the five out. Adam runs down his four. And don't forget, as soon as the tournament's over today, they're going to have satellites starting as soon as next week for next year's event. Billy doesn't take any time off at all. It's right to it. The 2014 Proprietors Cup will be here at Beaverview Bowl. And if you want to find out your way to make it into the Proprietors Cup through a satellite or just paying your own entry in, head on over to proprietorscup.com and you can find out all that information. Mike, somebody asked on the chat here if it's the same pattern as qualifying. I believe it is. I, I don't know why they would switch. It is. Do you? Yeah, that's what I thought. Now that ball got way wide. For Silvestri, Sebi Silvestri, huge double after opening on lane 11 twice in a row. So. so remember, Veach had the lowest game, and Veach now has 48 in the third with a spare up in the fourth. So Veach in trouble. And there were three guys, like Adam was 216 or whatever. There was a 215, a 218 or something like that. So those guys are close. Yeah, 215 for Barda. Copping had 216, 219 for Jimmy Cook. 224 for Sterner. Rick Miller, 225 the first game. Rice and Silvestri both had 233. Well, if Adam can get two or three strikes here, he could uh, really improve his chances. Without question. Now, Jason Sterner, strike, and three spares in a row. What's he going to do? Flat 10. These two pairs are not as forgiving as lanes no, five I, through eight. I was going to say that. Not at all. Another 10 pin. There's really no bad bowler in these eight bowlers. I called them the eight studs, and they're the eight studs for a reason. We've got all shapes and sizes, different ways of throwing the bowling ball. We've got a two-hander. We've got an old guy in Rick Miller. And I guess uh, I guess Adam Bard is kind of an old guy in this field, too, right now. Uh, 
A veteran, I should say. Definitely a veteran. Not sure how old those other guys are. It's a good look at Adam. That shot right. was for you, Pete Barda. That a boy. He's got kids to feed. <laughs> and a and a pool to drain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a deck to pay for. <laughs> Veach leaves a 10. Poor Veach, he, uh, he just has not had any luck at all, as you mentioned, Pete. Yeah, he's really caught some bad breaks. This Topping. has become a 10-pin slayer. Like It's like 10 pins everywhere down here. you got to cover them. If you miss them, look out. Now, remember, we have eight bowlers bowling right now. It's a two-game match. We're trying to get it down to six, so the two lowest two-game totals will be dropped. We'll go over to lanes 13 and 14 and 15 oh, and 16. there you go. Copping missed his 10-pin. Yes, he did. And if Adam can double, because they were only a couple pins apart, I mean, it's going to come down to the 10th frame, I think. I like Sterner's shot. Uh, it looked like he laid it into the lane a little bit better that time, but uh, goes high. Sterner has only struck once, and it was in the first frame, and he's now in frame number six. And what did he have the first game? Sterner had 224. So he was eight pins ahead of Adam. There's Rick Miller with the strike. Nice guy, Nebraska guy, friend of Rob Gotchel. Oh, yeah, great guy. This is his job. He comes out here and just bowls. Well, there's a lot of class there by Sebi Silvestri. He struggled on that left lane just when you thought he was lost. Now he's come back to double on it. He's been perfect on the right lane thus far. He bowled 233 the first game. He's he's rolling right along now. You know, I got to tell you, you had all those bowlers on Friday. There was 64 five-person teams and. Some of them came from quite a ways just to bowl that. All right, Adam. And uh, something interesting, I was talking to Jeremy Hunt, and I was like, Jeremy, you know, you drove quite a ways to get here, and you're, you're not bowling tomorrow. And he had to go bowl something else that he's been bowling in all year where you get points or whatever. Yeah, Southern Missouri Bowler Store. And he had said to me, you know, he goes, Pete, I just, I love to bowl. I love to compete. And he, he really liked bowling with Adam and the people on his team. And he's like, you know what, if I go home with, five extra dollars in my pocket and, and I get to bowl and I get to lace them up, I'm happy. And I thought that was interesting because there were a lot of people that said, hey, I, I just like to bowl. You know, I want to I wanna bowl. Yeah, it's a very good point. 320 bowlers laced them up. If they had more lanes, they'd have filled more. No doubt. And uh, you can tell everybody was here just really to bowl because only six teams cashed out of 64, and it's more of a feel-good event. It's more like a wedding reception for bowlers. <laughs> well, and I believe it was the same pattern, was it not? It was, you kind of got three games of practice, and people yeah. were showing off the new balls for the different uh, the different brands. Yep, Jason it Sterner neat. getting on the board in seventh. Now Jimmy Cook. How's the Twitter going? <laughs> it's going okay, Jody. Except that I might be the only person, uh, Mike Flanagan, in the history of Twitter to get suspended, whatever that means, uh, within the first day, within 10 hours, for too much activity. <laughs> Are you what serious? I, whatever that means. That, that either means too many people were doing things with me or I'm a cyber stalker or whatever <laughs> you want to call it. So um, I don't know. But, but I'm back on now, so <laughs> it's good. Well, we love getting your tweets up in the booth, the hashtag inside bowling. Beach now with a double. He can shoot 237. So Beach can still shoot 237? Didn't he have a couple opens? Yeah, he can shoot 237. Wow, okay. He had one open. And he had 189 the first game? Yep. So he'll be he could get the plus 20-something. 
Yep, and A.J. Rice is going to advance. He bowled 233 the first game, and uh, he's only missed once this game. Come on, Adam. You need this one. You there it. you go. That was a typical Adam bar to strike right there. Where all the pins just kind of lift up like an inch or so off the deck and just walk backwards into the pit. So since I don't know how to put my thing out there, I see Bobby Benton and different people on the uh, chat there. My my Twitter thing is at pbarda68. At pbarda68. Yeah. And I don't know how to find people or do any of that because it's not like Facebook. And the younger crowd, as I learned this weekend, uh, doesn't use Facebook. Some of them don't even have it. They're more twitter Oh, yeah. Uh, people, which I don't really understand, but I guess well, I will. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because on, on Facebook, you have to be accepted as a friend. On Twitter, you can just look at anybody's public feed. Ah. So there's no limitations on how many people you can have follow you and things like that. Facebook, 5,000, and you're, you're done. Hester wants to know if we're going to Carter's team event in September. We'll be there streaming. I, I'm not sure. Maybe Adam knows about it. I didn't know about it, but that sounds good. I'd like to take a team down there that's a that's a fun event too it's it's to raise money for cancer awareness also oh then yeah. mary tubner was jeff carter's very very good friend was in his wedding and she lost her life to cancer and uh he raised i believe over eight thousand dollars last year for cancer research i would love to be a part of that as you know my father passed away this past year from cancer yeah you made it to the holiday doubles just a week after you guys made the trip down and we really dedicated that tournament to your father yes thank you so, yeah, absolutely, Hester. I'd love to come down there and do that and be a part of that and help raise some money. I mean, maybe one day they'll find a cure for their horrible disease. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, really touching things that have come from the fight for cancer. Jimmy V speech, the V Foundation. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mike, at the Holiday Doubles, there was a guy there that was bowling with... Uh, yeah, he, Sean Swanson, uh, how, sarcoma. How's he? Is he doing okay? Yeah, I hope? he's doing great. He's striking out sarcoma. He's doing great, and he's raising money for cancer as well. Awesome. You want to know what your Twitter name again was? It was at P Barda, the letter P Barda 68. Now, Adam, that's a huge ham bone for Barda. So, anyway, I guess you can't. I tried to use P Barda, but it won't let you. There must be a lot of P Bardas out there. So, yeah, I, pick, I picked my football jersey. Is that uh, you there? Yeah, that's me. All right. Picked my f my football number, which was 68, Oops. and threw it on the end there. Okay, guys, so interesting here. Lane's 11 and 12 now. Eric Copping bowled 216 the first game. He's staring at 180, dead in the face. Holy cow, did you see that, Gary? He's in trouble. That's Twister Pins at their best for A.J. Rice. We know he's going to move on. Hey, can you ban people from this? You should ban Bobby Benton. <laughs> he said, I thought 68 was your age, and I used to like Bobby, too. <laughs> Jason Sterner, a huge strike in the ninth. Foundation frame, the old Copping, French tickler, as I like to call it. He covered his spare. So, like you said, Mike, you can go 185. So I've got my pen and paper in hand. Copping goes 185. It's going to be 401 for him. And AJ Rice is in good shape. Veach needs to strike here. He can still shoot 214. And there's oh, a blower eight wow. pen. That's going to end his day. That's the story of the week. So weekend. he can go 2 0 now. He was 180, so Correct. Adam's, Adam's going to make it. Yep, 185 for, for Copping. He shoots 401. Looks like Beach and Copping are going to be out, and the other six guys are going to advance. All right, Adam. There you go, Marcy. Food for the kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I get a piece of that action, too. So <laughs> It was 251 <laughs> for A.J. Rice. 484 for A.J. Rice. Nice bowling by that young man. He opened up the first time with 512. Averaging about 250 in these elimination rounds. So what's interesting is you're going to have six, and I think you're going to have three righties and three lefties. And I think they should put the three lefties on one, one lane and the three righties on the other lane and then flip-flop them. That's all random draw. 
Sterner leaves the four pin. He can shoot 212 to go with his 224. That'll put him at 436 if he can do so. And Mr. Sebi Silvestri can shoot 211, which will put him at 444 after he's been averaging like 260 for the day. And Jimmy Cook quietly gets in. He's going to shoot 268, it looks like, if he can fill it up here in a tenth. Sterner covers the spare. I think Jason Sterner should teach a class on how to keep your facial hair perfectly trimmed. <laughs> and I, I, I would attend it. I would like to go attend yeah, that I would as too. well. I don't know that I could go. I got to shave about every hour. <laughs> it's 4:43 for Sebi Silvestri, and Sterner makes a ball change. Looks like a Brunswick ringer. Looks like to me, and it's 2:12 for Sterner. That's 4:36. For Jason Sterner. Here's the scoreboard from 11 and 12 real quick. In between frames. 264 for Mr. Cook. That's 483 for that young man. Good job, Jim. Rick Miller bowled 207. That's 432 for Rick Miller. And now Barda and Veach, the last two to finish. Come on, Adam. Mike, do you know what ball Adam was, oh. was throwing? Oh, there he tripped the 10 forward. Uh, I thought it was the first blood, but I think it's one of the new ones. Yeah, that are no, out. it's not a first blood. I thought it, it's one of the new ones that just came out. He, he really likes it. It looks like an arson low flare to me, but I'm not uh, sure. I'm not going to bother him right now. No. Even I, though he's already advanced. The week. Sorry, guys. I can't really tell you. It's weird the relationship Adam and I have, I don't really know the names of the bowling balls. I kind of know the color and what they do. Adam's throwing an amp, I was just told. Okay, there you go. And I kind of, you know, when I talk to him about trying something or whatever, I tell him, you know, use use this ball, and he knows what I'm talking about. So V shoots 378. He's going to be out. And remember, total pinfall does matter, so he's going to get the eighth spot. Seventh place is going to go to Eric Copping, and there is a difference in prize fund between those two spots. You know, a Adam comes back and bails out 246, never a doubt, interesting, 461. Interesting you say that, Mike, about the prize fund, because when they came back today and they bowled the six games, there was definitely a difference between 25th place and 11th place. So unlike other tournaments where when you have a cut, you know, so many guys may get the, the same amount of money here, everything made a difference. Every pin made a difference, all six games. Yep, and we'll be right back with continuing coverage here from the 2013 Proprietors Cup, the round of eight. We'll be back with the round of six here in just a few minutes. We'll get our cameras switched around, and we are going to be claiming a champion later on today who's going to actually claim $15,500. We'll be right back with you. <laughs> 